Hey everyone, I'm Matthew from Patchworks, aka EasyBot, and I'm back with another episode of This Week at Patchworks, the synthesizer show that we put on every Friday at 3 o'clock on Facebook and Twitch. And today we have a special guest. We have Enrique Martinez of Novation coming on, and he's going to show us the new features of Firmware 2.0 for the Novation Peak and the Novation Summit. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Enrique on. Yo, what's up? How's it going? Can you hear me okay? Sure can. Sounds great. Welcome and thank awesome. you for coming on with us today. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me, Matt. I'm always, uh, always down to talk synths and whatnot, as you might know, as we were talking for almost <laughs> yeah, an but... hour before this. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, true. Yeah. But um, yeah, so uh, for those of you who might not know me, my name is Enrique Martinez. I work at Novation. I uh, kind of deal with a lot of the synthesizer stuff and Peak being one of my favorite synthesizers, I figured I'd be the one to show the new 2.0 updates. So uh, yeah, what you say, Matt? Should we just jump right into it? Yeah, I'm stoked. There's a whole bunch of features. Uh, I have a list of them in front of me and uh, I'm pretty excited for you to show off the new effects that have been added to the flanger mode in that lo-fi delay particularly. So hopefully we get a chance to cover okay, that. Okay, cool. One. I'm actually I'm actually glad you asked about the lo-fi delay because I was kind of the one that I wanted to start with. Um, so for example, I'm gonna just initialize this patch right easy. Uh, I'll turn the filter down a little bit, give myself a little bit of release, just to make it a little more playable. So I'll turn the delay up. And what I like to do with this lo-fi delay, basically there's a really high resolution delay in here. And by, in a sense, kind of like lowering the bit rate, we can extend how long the delay time is and just keep like halving it and having it and having it. So it starts kind of falling apart, which is how oh, cool. it allows us to get such really, really, really long delays. I want to say it's over a minute. It might even be close to like a minute and a half or something of how long this delay can actually go. So I'm going to just choose something relatively short so we can not be here all night. Okay. Right. So let's say we're at this, right? And I'll turn our feedback up. So that's that. But if I go into our effects now, time mode, I can then half this. Oh, nice. And then I can do it again. And you can hear that it's kind of taking this loop that lives within the delay and just stretching it out. Let's do a little more. Let's go again. Wow, I like that a lot. Again, it's really, really fun. Can you process external audio through that delay? You can on Summit. You can so on Summit, Summit okay. Summit has the audio inputs as well as four audio outputs, the main and then the, the um, like, uh, auxiliary out. And what's really fun on Summit is because it's um, by timbrel, you can have two patches at once. The way I like to use it is I'll go into, um, <clears throat> I'll try and make this quick. I'll go into like the <laughs> split mode and I'll have one patch. I'll, oh, forgive the dog. I'll have one patch where basically I'll just take that patch and key latch it. <laughs> I'll key latch it, which will open up the VCA. I'll turn all the oscillators off and only turn the external input up. So now I'm just using half of Summit as audio processing. Well, and that leaves me on patch A, right? Because if I set that up on patch B, I can go on patch A and use that as a regular eight voice Summit. So I have half processing and then send that out of the aux output and then the other part coming out of the main output. Easy. Sick. It's it's super fun to be able to process things. But yeah, I kind of have a lot of fun just trying to build weird loops on here that will literally go on forever. <laughs> That's what I want. I just turned the level down. Yeah. And they don't self oscillate, which is kind of one of my favorite things instead of having to find this, the sweet spot, you know? But check this, I can then whip this all back up. and add some more to it. And then bring it back down. 
And then if you wanted to do some really trippy things, you can say change the routing. Let's send the delay into the reverb into the chorus, so I'll turn our reverb up. And then speaking of chorus, right, we have the new chorus modes. Here on mode, we have your regular chorus, which, you know what, let me just go ahead and turn this off so it's not that wild. <laughs> Funny story, I was, when I got the update notes, I was like, oh, this all looks great. I read through like the whole addendum, right? And then I was like, just one thing, I think there's a typo uh, <laughs> in the effects <laughs> section. They're like, no, it's a mix between a flanger and a phaser. So oh. there's chorus, flanger, and phalanger. And I actually really like it because let's see what we're at right now. My favorite thing about these is that you get the, um, the feedback. And if you turn rate all the way down, it'll just lock it. Oh, cool. And then you change your depth. So you can just kind of find those sweet spots, right? Or if you turn it just to one, you get a slightest movement. All right, we'll go back to flanger here. As you would expect, but I really love the Flanger. I don't know how to say this one. Throw that into the reverb. So you can do how so you can do three simultaneous effects plus distortion, so I guess four on every patch. Yeah, exactly, on every patch. And what's cool about the effects, which is one of my favorite things, is after the oscillators, minus the effects, it's all analog. You have an analog VCA, um, the analog mixer, an analog pre-filter overdrive, analog filter, and then an analog pre-filter distortion. Then mm. you get to the effects, right? So we didn't want to, or I should say Chris Huggett, right? The designer of Peak. We didn't want to take this really nice warm analog signal and just run it back into DSP, even though this DSP is really, really good. Like it's all ran off of the FPGA. So it's not just typical, really like 96 kilohertz. It's a lot of this stuff is like in the 24 megahertz range or something like that. Whoa. But what's cool is you actually get a separate wet and dry level because the effects are ran in parallel. Um, with the analog signal. They're not like in serial, if that makes sense. It's just perfect. Like you just get all the timbres yeah. you could possibly need from a synthesizer. Plus you get that right. that filter that you need. You want that analog filter. I think it's more important than an analog oscillator, in my opinion, Right, is that filter. Uh, totally, because looking back at synthesis and synthesizers, the one like big defining thing between a lot of different companies Maybe Oberheim's a little different because they did have the like the smooth um, the SEM oscillators, right? Where they like uh, smoothly uh, interpolated between. I mean, Moog had them as well, but the one thing you really think of are their filters. Like Moog had the ladder, sequential was the Curtis, Oberheim was the SEM. Um, Novation is actually the Wasp filter i'm not sure if you're familiar with the wasp and the oscillator. like the, the one Huggett. you can get from dope fur as well yeah exactly so the original okay. wasp synth and then there was like the nat at some point as well chris huggett designed that he also designed the oscar but he's taken that filter design which is his and applied it into like the base station it's here in peak it was in the base station too it's in the mono station oh. um, so essentially what you're getting here is the wasp filter which can basically hold a lot of bass while you turn the resonance up. There's a really good bass compensation in it. And then you get the 12 dB and the 24 dB slope. 
and then the different uh, modes, low pass, band, uh, band pass, and high pass. Um, but yeah, so going back to your point where you kind of have this really flexible core, which is like these FPGA digital wavetables that don't alias, don't fall apart, they're not sample-based, mm -hmm. they're actually generated, but then you run that into like a lot of the warmth generating stuff like analog circuits and then analog filters, you kind of get the, the uh, best of both worlds because... Mm -hmm. The synth I really wanted I for a long time was the Waldorf microwave because it was like half analog, uh, half digital, and I was like, "That's cool. You get it all. You know, you get you get yeah. the all the wavetable stuff, but then you get all the analog stuff, and it makes a really good uh, combination." So, and especially in today's day and age, I think more than enough um, processing power is out there to make these things sound really good. Maybe I think so too. Nineties. Digital stuff was a little questionable, but now it's like really good. All right, so another one of my favorite things that we've added on um, 2.0 is if I initialize this, we've added um, a couple new mod sources as well as mod destinations. Really quick, let me quickly say that we finally got the sustain of mod envelope one, two, and amp added. Thank thankfully, because that was one thing that wasn't on the first one. I'm not exactly sure why, but it's finally here. We also have mod envelope to delay because we've also added envelope delays, right? Yeah, so then we took it a bit further and added a mod envelope to delay destination in the uh, mod Whoa. matrix. So now I can send, let's say, my velocity to how much delay there is. So if I play a key lightly, Oh, I've actually never really seen hard. that before. It's going to take a really long time for the delay to kick in. I'm not going to keep you waiting that long. Yeah, there's just <laughs> really, really weird and like trippy sources to destinations. It kind of reminds me of a, a modular system because you can yeah. be like, well, what would happen if I sent this to that while it's opening that, you know? So back to these uh, mod destinations. We finally added those um, delay, sustain, and hold for all the envelopes on this thing. But one of my favorites is oscillator one, two, and three shape. So the shape of all three oscillators at the same time by the same amount from the same source, which is nice because you did have control over oscillator one shape, two shape, three shape, but not all three of them at the same time. Right. So that would take up three mod slots out of your 20 slot mod matrix to do the same thing in a way. So now we've just added it as one destination for all three, which is handy. That's pretty sick. And the reason you would even want to change the shapes is say we were on a sine wave. Since like we we're talking about earlier, you have FPGA here. I can play a note, but even a sine wave has a wave table to it. Right, so now I can just say, well, in our mod envelope, what's gonna be moving our uh, oscillator one, two, and three shape. We can choose any of these weird um, sources or normal sources, I guess you can also use them. But like, for example, keyboard, right? So that's just gonna do key tracking. The higher up I go, the more brassy it is, but the lower notes are more sine wave. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy to make new sounds on the peak considering that all the oscillators are wavetables. Right, and each of the regular like wave uh, shapes have wavetables, but then if you go into more, you have tons. I think it's well over 40, maybe I might, yeah, I think it's 30 or 40, but then you also have your, your 10 uh, user wavetables, which you use components to uh, shape. And basically, the way it works, each wave table has five positions. One, two, three, four, five. This is a smooth knob, though, and it smoothly interpolates between those sounds. So if we listen to V chord. Oh, wow. Right, so say we like that, right? That's fine. We'll go to oscillator two, choose a new wave table, didgeridoo. I'll put it here, and then we'll say oscillator three. We'll turn that up, we'll go to more, and we'll do two B. Cool, so let's turn them all up. 
Again, mod matrix. Now we have what's going to be moving all of them. We can do LFO one. And then not only that, you have manual control over where they begin and end. But then mm. instead of taking up slots in the mod matrix, I can say begin here at, I don't know, negative 46. But from negative 46, let's have mod envelope one go plus 20 while LFO one is going negative 33. So I just assigned three sources to this one destination without taking up a single mod slot, all with just this one button and this one knob. And you can do that wow. for each of the oscillators. So now oscillator one is doing some wild things, right? And same goes here. I can say mod envelope one, go positive, and amp envelope, go negative. Let's give myself a little bit of attack. You've got a nice uh, formant sound coming. Yeah. And then you even have the ring between those two. So ring is gonna take the oscillators one and two and ring them against each other, creating like a, a weird complex wave shape. Yeah, check this out. You'd probably dig this. Um, I'm gonna go and go into our arpeggiator. So it has built-in arp as you would expect, right? But what's cool is there's a ton of different arp modes. So right now um, we're just on up. We have down. Let me play a bigger chord. Up, down. But then there's also um, chord one, which is just gonna be play the chord. There's also rhythms on here, so there's different rhythms that, this is all can be synced to the tempo. Oh. Right? Whoa, I didn't but know about say the rhythms on, thing. That's sick. Yeah, they're really, they're really fun. What's cool too, is you also have ARP chance. What's the chance that it will happen? So let's do 80%. And this is just on a straight 16th ARP. Oh, that's right up my alley right there. Right, but what, what's wild is this has almost two functions because if we go to chord two, what chord two is gonna do, it's just like chord one, but now our ARP chance dictates whether this will play a single note from that chord or play the entire chord. So watch, we'll put it to 50%. Listen to this, this is really cool. Oh. Sick. Right? Yeah. I just like watching the, the voices, the feedback on the voices there. And like, say you throw this into like a Ableton Live or something, you just record this and then you can find the, um, you can find like a really dope loop of where it played like a couple notes and then chord, chord, note, note, chord. And you're like, cool, just loop that. Boom, you got the idea for your song. Yeah, that's that's kind of a that, very like, valid workflow. <laughs> Say we just do up. You also have things like swing. So let's do. Uh, we'll play this chord here. Also, again, you can see it in the voices. There's even negative swing if you wanted to be that person. If you want to be that person. <laughs> And then you got your key sync and then sync rate as well. This is all based off of whatever the tempo is here. And you can have it clocked by um, USB, MIDI, or just the internal clock itself. Um, so that's another addition in the new firmware was the chord, mo chord mode two type plus the ARP chance stuff, which is really nice. So let's see, after that, of course, we got the effects like we were talking about. A lot of the new um, mod destinations Another one of my favorites that kind of adds, I actually talked about this a lot in depth in a different video, but I just love using it so much is, let's say we have an initialized patch. We have noise, right? On our mixer, mm -hmm. as you would expect. But 
we've actually taken noise and by default when peak first came out it was um there was this destination called noise um it's part of the linear fm noise to oscillator one this was always here so if you leave these set to direct you can just send a direct um, voltage mm -hmm. of noise to oscillator one just right? get some nastiness yeah if you really wanted but what's cool is instead of just leaving it there only we've actually added noise as a source to then go to any of the destinations that you wanted to go to originally so now i can even send noise to my filter frequency. So say we turn this down. I can then just turn this up. Hey, that's very useful right there. Noise to the filter frequency is a nice sound. Right, and it's more than just turning up the ocean, you know? That's yeah. the one thing, like I love noise, but at the end of the day, it still just kind of has the, you know, that as yeah. you'd expect. So when you kind of, integrate it into certain knobs and parameters that are moving with noise it changes the way you hear the noise and <clears throat> if you wanted to get really nerdy with it if you go i, I do to, i do <laughs> if you go to your oscillator section you actually have a noise low pass filter and a noise high pass filter and this is applied before any of its uh, mod sources and destinations. So okay. We, we can hear this, right? But watch, as I shape the noise high pass. That's oh, removing a lot of the noise. Here it kind of tames okay. it. Yeah. Now it's just in the higher end. It's not doing a lot of the deeper sounds. Or you can do the opposite and just have it in the deeper notes. And one fun thing to do as well, if you're ever looking for inspiration that I like to do is I'll just go and have noise set to a destination with a depth of about 10, maybe even a little less, like five, and just kind mm -hmm. of flick through and see what it does. So this is to pitch. Oscillator one virtual sync amount. Oscillator one shape. Sounds crazy. Oscillator one level, so say oscillator one level was down, but then we turn the noise up. That sounds it's like insane. uh Yeah, it's just adding deterioration to like the circuits of yeah. the things that are that it's being assigned to, which is my favorite way, because it's a completely new way of using noise. And it it feels slightly different than just using a sample and hold at a really fast rate, even though essentially that is what noise is, right? White yeah. noise is just chaos. So in a way you can kind of do that already without having to sacrifice one of your LFOs. <laughs> But I mean, let's see, what else? Another one of my favorite things that has been added, if we go to an initialized patch here, we're back here, right? We've always had these animate buttons, just kind of chilling over here on the side. Um, and they can be used for a multitude of different things because they are sources in the mod matrix. As you can tell, we kind of live in this mod matrix when we really want to do some deep diving. Sure, mm -hmm. you got a ton of control on the face of the unit over your amp envelope, mod one, mod two, LFO one, LFO two, sync rates, timing, shapes, all that stuff. But if I really wanted to dive deeper into getting some more playable, fun, um, or not playable and fun, but more unique and custom sounds, I love going straight to the mod matrix because it's really fast to um, to navigate. You have you know your 16 slots, what's the destination, what's the source, two sources per, and what's the destination. So in this case, I'm gonna use animate one. If I go and I highlight animate one, and then I choose a destination, let's say oscillator pitch, and I turn it up, you can already see it's, it turns on. So let's say we want to go up plus 12. So now if I press this, right, let's go all the way up. So high, dog whistle territory. Okay, Is this, so it's kind of like a performance button. Exactly. Okay. And I can hold that too to find out. 
right? Those are cool. Awesome. But my biggest wish for these when I first got them was I wish that there was a way that I can control, like add a slew to them. So we have that now, which is here. Animate one envelopes. So the attack time. As well as its release time. Check this out. Oh, cool. Right? And you want to do something usable besides this annoying whining sound is we'll take that and say, let's send Oscillator 3's FM to 1. So now Oscillator 3 is going to modulate, frequency modulate, Oscillator 1. Only when I press this, you can move this. Sick. That was a good one. That's a, that's a good source right there. That turned out really well. Right, and then we'll turn this up even more. Yeah, that is awesome. And then note value is really cool. Basically, similar to those nine different values of panning, it's going to apply those to your keyboard. And it's kind of like key tracking, but across an octave of where those nine values are going to land for the key. So your C's might always land here in octave one, but then your C's in octave two might land over here. It's just a really fun way to add a little bit more movement to your um, sound design or to your sound patches. And even if you didn't want to do that, by default, we have just pan position, which will position the entire synthesizer more left leaning or right leaning. And this is also a destination within the mod matrix. So you can send an envelope to have your, your synth whip out from one side and then kind of land in the center or you can apply an LFO to move that around as well. Um, so those are the stereo modes that we have here. But yeah, stereo cool. modes, noise as a mod source, a ton of new mod destinations, the effects, lo-fi delays, as well as the flanger and the phaser, or the phasery type of flanger, the choruses, more control over LFO 3 and 4, LFO 3 and 4 now available in the mod matrix, as well as the effects matrix, the anime envelopes, and the chord two mode in the arpeggiator are all kind of some of the bigger amazing things that have been added. And and for those who asked, uh, yes, this update is out now. It's on components. If you have a peek, plug it in, components.innovationmusic.com. You'll see a little firmware button, push that and boom, it's super simple. I mean, you did it not too long ago. I did right it. Now. I did it right before we got on the stream here. And what's really incredible about components, and this I haven't seen this on any other synthesizer company. So this is this is definitely worth some high praise is that when I plugged the peak into my laptop and I was gonna do a firmware update, I don't know about you, you get a firmware update comes out for a synthesizer, whether it's a Eurorack module or just a regular synthesizer, I'm usually like, you know, if I'm really familiar with the device, it's not a big deal. But if it's something that's new to me and I haven't used it, it is a, it's a, an ordeal to so often to, yeah update stuff and i literally <laughs> just about SysX and all that yeah yeah, well, yeah exactly yeah you're going through my favorite sysx programs that make me want, like melt my brain <laughs> but uh but this one literally plug a usb cable into the computer and it detected the peak and said do you want to update and it was just that was it and my peak was mm -hmm. updated i was just like that was incredible yeah it was the, literally the easiest operation i've ever had ever and it was on a browser yeah. window. I didn't even have to download an app. And that's how that's it amazing. works for all the um, Novation products as well. So if you have like a Circuit Tracks, Rhythm, Base Station 2, um, that's kind of our hub. Components.innovationmusic.com is our hub for you to get like all your sound patches, your wavetables, updates, uh, new features, customize your effects and stuff like that on, on Circuit Rhythm, I should say. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun little place to kind of dive around and it is and there's Easter tons of and yeah and speaking of that so we do we have peaks for sale here at patchworks available right now so if you fell in love with this machine during our stream like i did um then you can go ahead and grab one from patchworks right now also i want to mention that there are more patches right there's some new patches that came out with the firmware that we didn't demo yeah, because you have to get them from the components side of things but there's a bunch of new patches right. for peak that you can get for free 
Yeah, they're all for free. They're cool too, the way that they're set up because they're all in components. You choose which artist you want, like Lego Well or Quiet Williams. There's even Bo Beats on there. Uh, G-Force, the OGs are on there. Uh, and you just select that bank and then you choose what bank you want to send it on your peak. Your peak has four banks of 128 patches and then boom, it just shoots them right over and you're good to go. And same with the wavetables. You can create all your own wavetables on there and shoot them into one of the 10 user wavetables on peak without disrupting your patch banks, which is nice. That's really cool. There's so many sounds. I mean, it yeah. covers like every sound possible. <laughs> so far yeah i heard just yeah, about every really timbre does. available to my brain <laughs> during our stream <laughs> awesome but cool thanks everybody for tuning in uh thank you jeff i appreciate all the kind words uh thank you matt and uh thanks patchworks yeah thanks everybody cherry yeah no, no thank you enrique always Ika, a pleasure we love doing these streams with you work. Um, you are a wizard on that peak. I mean, you never you fly on that peak so fast. It's it's incredible. Yeah, I have to slow myself down sometimes. Yeah, I'm like we're gonna. Sometimes I feel like it's gonna speed. be in that that episode of Dexter's Lab where he like breaks his finger pushing the keyboard too fast. I feel like I'm gonna do that hitting one of these buttons sometimes. <laughs> That's how I feel on uh, on the Octatrack. I'm just like I'm gonna break the fader right off of it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, cool. cool. Appreciate it.